Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's always a pleasure for me and an honor for me to be right here at Tron. Let me turn it on. Turn it on my microphone. Good morning, everyone. I think you can hear me better now. I don't know. <laughs> I said that it's always a pleasure for me to be at the front teaching for this congregation. This is a congregation that lives in my heart and always is a privilege for me to receive the invitation of the elders to be teaching for you. This morning, we're going to be studying in the book of Matthew chapter 22, verse 15 through verse 17. And the title of my lesson for this morning is Jesus answers and questions. There are many answers of Jesus in the New Testament and many questions of Jesus in the New Testament. But honestly, we don't have enough time to be discussing all his answer and all his questions just in one lesson. So I got in mind many, many different things to bring for you this morning, but we don't have enough time. Honestly, we don't have enough time. So I decide just to choose this chapter 22, verse 15 and verse 17. But this is gonna be a very interesting lesson. And this uh, approaching of these people remind to me in my hometown, there was, uh, a drunkard that he approached to me almost always approached to me and when he approached to me he started talking to me about my person about myself very high very high you are a so good man you are a so, a so good young man you are so smart you are uh, so honest and, and you are i know that you know the bible i know you, that you are a faithful christian and just many many beautiful words about me but his intention was ask me money for to buy alcohol that was his intention. And th when I, I was studying this lesson, I got in mind this man. And he was, oh, Carlos, 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 you are the best person right here in this town. I know the Bible. I know that you respect the Bible. And the Bible also say, Carlos, that you must love your neighbor as yourself. So can you please give me some money to buy some alcohol? And my answer was, he was smart because he was using the Bible. And, and my answer was all the time, I'm sorry, Salvador, I can give you money to buy alcohol. When I respond to him like that, he became angry and he changed his mind. You are terrible, man. You are not respecting the Bible. How do you are thinking that you are going to heaven if you are not helping me right now? And I respond, hey, I'm going to help you. Let's go. Let's go to the restaurant and I'm going to buy some food for you. No, I don't want food. I just want money for alcohol. I'm sorry. I can not give you money for alcohol. But after uh, to be discussing for a couple of minutes, I persuade him and I took him to a restaurant and I bought some food for him. He was very hungry. And I told to the, to the owner of the restaurant, whatever he wants, keep, keep suing, I'm gonna pay, I'm gonna pay. He ate a lot of food and I bought a, a soda, like one Sprite, I remember, one Sprite, soda, half a liter and he drank all the soda. And after that, he ate, I asked him, how do you feel now? He said, Carlos, I feel much better now. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. And he took his way, and I took my way. Something similar happened right here. 
after a flattering introduction, the disciple of the Pharisees and the disciples of the, of, of the Herodians, they approached to Jesus. It was a flattering introduction. Thank you, Brother Alex, for the scripture reading. And they were talking very high about Jesus. But the question is, if they really were believing all those words that were, they say, why they, they didn't follow Jesus? Why didn't they obey Jesus' commandments? That's mean that they were liars, liars, and hypocrites people. If we are not going to obey what Jesus says, and we are talking very high about Jesus, we are liars. We are liars and we are not sincere people. And the same happened with these people. They approached to Jesus talking very high. Master, Rabbi, we know that you are coming in the name of, of, of the Lord God, with Jehovah God. We believe that. We believe that you are an honest man, that you follow the law of Moses, that you obey the law of God. That was a flattering introduction to attack the Lord. Unfortunately, their intentions were evil intentions. And they get to Jesus with a question. The question from the Pharisees was the following. Then the Pharisees went and plot how they might entangle or trap. In other versions says trap. Trap him, trap the Lord in his talk, in his talk, because in the way that we talk, we can make many mistakes. The Lord has been performing miracles, and all the miracles were perfect. Miracles to help all the people of Israel and a stranger. But they saw, oh, we can't trap him in the miracle. We're going to try try to drop him in his stock. When he be talking, he can say something wrong and we're gonna trap him. And remember that these people, they know the Bible perfectly. The Pharisees, they study the Bible letter by letter, the Old Testament, and they memorize it letter by letter. So we're going to try to trap him in his stock. And they sent to him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true. And teach the way of God in truth. Nor do you care about anyone, for you do not regard the person of man. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? After the introduction, talking very high about King, now came the question. What do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, yes or not? They are united, the Bible said that the uh, Pharisees believe different things than the Herodians believe. There were two religious sects, totally different, very different. They plot, but this time we see that they have plot how they might entangle or trap the Lord in his thought. But we see that this time they are working together. The Pharisees and the Herodians were together at this time and there was evidence of their great hatred of Jesus because they, they were willing to put aside their own differences for the sake of uniting against Jesus. The Pharisees, they believe in the resurrection of, of the dead. They believe in angels. 
But the Herodians, there are followers of King Herod the Great. And more than a religious group, they were a political group that they were following King Herod the Great. And they don't care too much about the Old Testament. They don't care too much about that. And they don't respect too much the belief of the uh, Pharisees. But at this time, we see that they are going to be working together. In the radio, in the TV, you're going to see many sects or many different faiths working together against the truth. For example, we're going to hear about Baptists, about uh, Pentecostals. But if you examine their, uh, their belief or, their, or, or their, their doctrine or the thing that they believe, you're going to find that they believe different things. They are not together in the same uh, believing. But when you're talking to them about, for example, the plan of salvation, what the Bible said about the plan of salvation, you're going to see that they are gathered together against the truth. In other words, many forces of the darkness unite against the church of Christ. In other words, to be honest, we are teaching the truth. We are believing so minutes ago, we pick up the offering and we participate of the Lord's Supper and we read in the Bible the way that the Bible commands to remember the sacrifice of Jesus on the first day of every week. But you're going to see many religions practicing this one, one thing a month, one thing a year, or oh, when they have decided to do it. But when, you're, when they are going to talk about a specific topic of the Bible, they get gathered together against the truth. It's exactly the same thing that was happening right here. Many differences. Pharisees between the Pharisees and the Herodian. But at this time, they are going to be working together because the plan of them was destroy Jesus Christ. In the book of Revelation, the Bible said that at the end, at the end, in the last times, we are living in the last times, but every time or every day, these wars is going to be worse and worse and worse. It's gonna, it, we're going to continue seeing destruction and destruction and destruction. And we're going to see people without God trying to find solutions. But it's not going to be possible to find solutions without God. It's impossible. No peace without the Prince of Peace. That is Jesus Christ. And the Bible said in the book of Revelation, for example, that the devil, the false prophet, and the beast are going to be working together. Satan, the false prophets, represent the false religion in the world. And the beast, the Antichrist. Everyone who opposed to Christ is an antichrist. This right here, the Pharisees in the Herodian, they were antichrists. They were opposing to Christ. That was the, the word antichrist man. Somebody that is opposing to Jesus Christ. So they plot how they might entangle him and they are working together. Jesus has been directly accusing and exposing the religious leaders of Israel. Now they are fighting back. If we start accusing and exposing the false religions, be prepared because they are going to be attacking back. They are going to be fighting back. And the recommendation is always, let's study the Bible. Let's study the Bible every day. 
Let's learn from the Bible every day. Let's be prepared to present defense of the truth. That's the only way to be prepared, is studying the Bible. So the Lord has been directly accusing and exposing the religious leader of Israel. Now they are fighting back. Now we see the Jewish leaders launching their counterattack. If we start preaching and teaching the truth, let's be prepared. Let's be prepared because the enemy of the truth, they are going to counterattack. Not physically, but with the war. Like the example that I start saying in my introduction, the drunkard, he used the Bible. The devil, he used the Bible. But they twist the Bible for their own convenience. And we have to be prepared for that. So now they are attacking back to Jesus. And they prepare formulated questions. It wasn't a, a, a foolish question. It was a very smart question. Pharisees. Who were the Pharisees? The Pharisees were a Jewish social movement in a school of thought. Listen to this. A school of thought. They were teachers. They were masters. They were rabbis. They know the Bible. They did the, the Old Testament. Not the New Testament, because it have not been revealed yet, but the Old Testament. They were teachers of the Bible. They were founded in the year 165 before Christian era, or before Jesus Christ. It was dissolved in the year 73 after Jesus Christ, after the destruction of Jerusalem. The destruction of Jerusalem was in the year 70. And they were dissolved like a religious group in the year 73. What about the other ones? The Herodians. The name of this party probably originate in a kind of hero worship for Herod the Great. King Herod the Great, a king that has been established for the Roman Empire. And this king, they didn't care too much about the people of his own country. He cared more, more about the interests of the Rome. They don't, he doesn't care too much about his own people. And these Herodians, they were followers of him. And this is not the first time that the Bible mentioned that they were trying to destroy Jesus Christ. In the book of Mark, he will read with me in the book of Mark, in the chapter 3, verse 1 to, through verse 6. But I'm gonna, I don't have time to be reading the whole portion of, of, of this scripture. Just I'm going to read the verse 6. The Pharisees went out and immediately began conspiring with the Herodians against him, against Jesus as to how they might destroy him. In Mark also mentioned that they were together right here too, to try to destroy the Lord Jesus. In this occasion, only because the Lord performed a miracle on Sabbath. In the day of rest. And they for him, it's not lawful that you do that one. Today is the Sabbath, and you must respect this day. And after Jesus had a discussion with them, he performed the miracle, and he uh, he healed this man. A man with a withered hand was healed in this occasion, but they tried to destroy the Lord. 
In Mark chapter 8, again, we read about, about, about Jesus. It's mentioned mentioned uh, about these, these people. In Mark chapter 8, verse 15. And he was giving orders to them, giving orders to his disciples. The Lord Jesus giving orders to his disciples or to his apostles, saying, watch out. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Leaven of the Pharisees and leaven of Herod. Teaching of the Pharisees a doctrine of the Pharisees, teaching or doctrine of Herod, King Herod. These were the followers or the disciples of King Herod. There were more than a religious group. There were a political group. A political group working for King Herod the Great. They were satanic groups working for the devil, opposing to the Lord Jesus Christ. Their plotting led to them to approach Jesus with flattery, hypocrisy, lies. They hoped he was insecure or foolish enough to be impressed for their hollow praise. Oh, they thought this is this is foolish enough. We are gonna impress him with these high words. And all his war were all their praise was, was hollow praise. They were honoring him only with their lips, but their heart was far away of him. We must be careful. We can say many beautiful words about Jesus Christ, but we must do more than that. He wants to hear beautiful words of him, that's correct. But he also wants that our heart be with him. Our heart, and all mouth or lips expressing beautiful things about the Lord because he deserves all honor, all glory, all praise forever and ever. Because these people, they were hypocrite people. They only trying to trap the Lord Jesus Christ. And the question is, is it lawful? Is it, what do you think? Is it lawful? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Yes or not? Yes or not? We're gonna trap him. Respond, yes or not? When I was prepping this lesson, taxes. Everybody's worried about taxes, right? Oh, taxes. I must pay taxes. We are glad when we're gonna receive money. But when we was to pay to the government, no one wants to pay to the government. No one. That's, that, that's a very difficult question. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Very interesting question. It's like to us. Is it lawful to serve two masters? Yes or not? We immediately respond. No. Oh. Is it lawful to partake the table of the Lord and the table of demons? No. And that's correct when, when we respond, no. It's not lawful. But Jesus not only responds the question, he responds in a in a wise way. He not only say yes or not, he has explained. He gave a context to them. When the Bible 
uh, said is lawful is is not refer is reference to the law of God. It's not referred to the law of wrong. There's no question about that. The Pharisees they don't care about the law or wrong. They were asking about the law of God. You said that you are the son of God. Is it lawful? The law of God allows us to pay taxes to a pagan emperor? Or we must just submit to the only and true God? It was a very difficult question. In debate, it was almost a debate. Jesus debating with these religious leaders of Israel. In other words, they were like, like asking to Jesus, is it permissible for the people of God, for the people of Israel to express allegiance to a pagan emperor? Jesus' dilemma with this question was simple. If he said that taxes should be paid, he could be accused of denying the sovereignty of God over Israel, making himself unpopular with the Jewish people because nobody wants to pay taxes to Rome. In the other hand, if he responds, if he said that taxes should not be paid, he made himself an enemy of Rome. It's like we said, he was between the devil and the deep blue sea. He was between like the people of Israel when they get out of Egypt in the desert, between the desert and the sea. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to escape. We're going to trap him in this question. He said, oh yes, we must pay taxes to Rome. All people is going to start shaking their head. That's not correct. We don't want to be paying taxes to Rome. And here we said, no, we must pay taxes to Rome. No, we must, we must not pay taxes to Rome. He became an enemy of the empire. It was a very difficult question. Let's see, there were three regular taxes at that time. Number one, the ground tax. Every citizen must to pay the 10% on grain and the 20% on oil and wine production. That was the tax number one that the empire was requiring to the people of Israel. Number two, the income tax. It was the 1% of man's income, not every citizen, only the man. The 1% of man's incomes, the tax number two. And the tax number three, the poll tax. This must be paid by every man from 14 to 65 years old, and every woman from 12 years old to 65 years of age. This tax was a denarius a year. You see, the empire was requiring taxes even from, from kids, 14 years old, a boy, a girl, 
12 years old. And the empire was asking taxes, one denarius per year for every citizen. That was terrible. We could say, no, the Pharisees were right. The Pharisees were right. The Herodians were right. But the Herodians, they were not agreed with the Pharisees, but, but at this time. Brothers and sisters, I hear a, a, a radio station is a religious radio station in English. And that radio station, sometime my wife tell me, change the channel. Because most of the time, this, that religious radio station is talking very bad about the government. Almost always is talking bad about the government. Bad, 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 and bad. And my wife's telling me sometimes, change, change the channel. I, I respond to her, no, I don't want to change because I want to learn about their mistakes. I sometimes I buy books with wrong doctrine, not with the intention or the purpose to learn the wrong doctrine, to know how they, they are believing and to compare it with the Bible. And once again, I am getting the truth, or I know that they are wrong. So they were not right. Apparently, they were right. Paying taxes. This particular tax in discussion was the poll tax. In the New American Standard Version, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 22, it said poll tax. That the question was about the poll tax. The question in discussion was the poll tax, not the other, not the tax number one, not the tax number two but the poll tax, the third one. Because this one, every citizen must to pay this tax. Every citizen. What's, what's Jesus' answer? Jesus answers, but Jesus perceived their weakness and said, why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. So they brought him a denarius, and he said to them, whose image and inscription is this. They said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. Jesus showed again that he was in control of everything. The Lord Jesus is in control of everything. In difficult moments, in difficult situations, he's in control of everything. We must trust him because if we are believing him and we are followers of him, let's keep in mind this, that he's in control of everything. He show again that he knows everything. And these people, they went their way marble. There was another, another political group in Israel that they were called the Salots. The Salot, they, they claim that the poll tax was a God dishonoring badge of slavery to the pagans. This group incite the people to oppose to run. But again, we see that the answer of Jesus was the best answer that we ever have heard. 
Jesus says, honor the government. We are not agree with many things that the government sometimes is doing. But the Bible and the Lord Jesus said, let's most honor the government. The government is doing many wrong things sometimes. But the commandment of the Lord is honor the government. Do you think that the government that we have right now is worse than the government that they have at this time? No. This was worse. But we never read in the Bible to the apostle saying, let's go to attack the government or let's go to destroy the emperor or to kill him. No. We don't hear that. We don't read that in the Bible. Jesus said, honor the government. Give to Caesar the things that belong to Caesar and to God the things that belong to God. Simple like that. The Lord is affirming that the government makes legitimate requests of us. In the book of Samuel, in the first book of Samuel, we read in the Bible that the people of Israel told to the prophet Samuel, ask to the Lord that we, that we want a king as the other nations. When the prophet told that to the Lord God, the Lord God was upset. I am the king of Israel. They don't need more king than, than me. That's enough. What the Lord God said, but well, I'm going to please them. If they are asking for a king, I'm going to give a king. But that king is going to take your children. He's going to ask you your money, your possession, all your things. Israel was suffering difficult times, but these all these things were their consequences of sin, of disobedience, of rebellion against the Lord Jehovah. So Jesus is saying, is affirming the government makes legitimate requests of us. The government is asking the taxes for us every year. It's a legitimate request. We must pay and do the taxes every year. The Lord Jesus says, we must be obedient to government in matters civil and national. We must be obedient. And the Lord Jesus says, we are responsible to God in all things while we are living in on this earth we are responsible to God in all things we have two citizenship we are citizens on, on this earth and we got the other citizenship on heaven we are responsible for that for, for both of them for the citizenship right here and the other one on heaven. Peter said it like this. Fear God. That's what the apostle Peter said. Fear God. Honor who? Honor the king. The government. Peter was talking about the Caesar. How is possible this? Peter is saying honoring Caesar. Honor Caesar. That's what we read in the Bible. Caesar was opposing to the church, opposing to the faith. But Peter said, honor the king. First Peter chapter 2, verse 17. And also Peter said in the verse 13 and verse 14 of the same chapter, submit to human institution. 
and all superior art. Authorities. Who else? Governor. To the government, we must be submit to the government. That's, is, that's the command of the Apostle Peter. That's the command of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is agree with Jesus Christ. So the Lord Jesus respond correctly to the Pharisees and to the Herodians. If Caesar, let's give to the govern, government what's belong to the government and to God what's belong to God. Right here, we are gathered together to be honoring God. That's the purpose to be right here. To be talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and his commandments. In conclusion, do you have any question this morning? Jesus got answers for you. Any question that you got in mind, he's able to respond to you. But this morning, he invites you to come to him, believing in him, and he desires that you repent of your sins and be baptized. We got water right here to be baptized for the forgiveness of sin. If you are interested to come to Jesus this morning, let us know to the elders and we assist you in anything that you need. Thank you so much. God bless everyone.